I played in Stanley Parable a few times, and if you have not played it yet, you just need to trust me in this game. I'm going to play through uh, real quickly, just kind of give you the idea of what this is. It's kind of like an interactive story, but there, there's some other elements in there. And uh, each time you play, you kind of want to change what you do. And, you know, there's different things that become accessible as time goes on. And I'm trying to decide which way I want to go. Um, I might just do whatever the big brotherish voice does tell me to do in this playthrough because it's usually pretty quick this one of them games where it loads up you do your thing and you can get out this is the story of a man named stanley let's, uh, let's sit back and enjoy stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427 employee number 427's job was simple he sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All right, so that's the voice that I'm talking about. We are gonna do exactly what he says in this playthrough and what happens outside of that, you're going to have to get the game, you're going to have to see for yourself. But whatever this voice says, we're going to do it this time. And let me just say... That I'm probably going to All of his co-workers were gone. Thing. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So there's other things... There. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. There's other things going on in this office, too, that lead to the most oddest of uh, achievements. And I feel like that computer is associated with one of them. And you'll, uh, you'll find a lot of stuff that you can interact with. Whether it's these computers, I think one of the fax machines, or one of the copiers. Uh, some doors, things like that. Let's go find this meeting room. We've got a meeting to go to. That's odd. Notice the... Uh, concrete walls back there. What's up with old Stanley's life? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Now I'm going to do exactly that. Let me just say that things can get really dark if you head that way. Can't get in. Can't get in. Can't get in. Alright, here's the meeting room. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. So we are going to go to that boss's office. Let me say, he has quite the office. Just, uh, just a bunch of words all put together. Man, this is... More water coolers, more water cooler eaters, work harder, hard worker. Good times. Throw something in the idea bin. Crap about things and money. 
This, uh, this is pretty, pretty hilarious. Alright, what do we got in here? Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I feel like I went down before and that leads to a different ending yet again. So like right now, you can actually speed run this in like four minutes if you completed it once. Alright, well here's the boss's office. Like I said, look at this place. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Alright, so this is where reality ends. Things, at least reality for Stanley. And that was pretty funny. I really appreciate them breaking the fourth wall. It happens quite often. You can have like a couple of different uh, times with the narrator uh, switches. story here is that you just don't work in a cube farm, man. I'm not gonna get told to push J's and Descending and deeper into like the that. building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Listening to the narrator, and again, Portal fans, does this look familiar? I think that this is related to. Avatar. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read "Mind Control Facility." Now I'm doing exactly as the narrator tells me to do. This is kind of important for a different playthrough, but right now we're gonna go over here because that's what we we're told to do. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. So that's pretty fucked up right there. You gotta wonder what kind of experiments were taking place in here, and you get to uh, see some more interesting things. Uh, in different playthroughs and different uh, times that you choose different areas including one that has like this really awesome commentary area that the developers made and just, just have to like get the game to track for yourself because right now we have pressing this mind control facility it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job that his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? 
No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. All right, well, let's dismantle some controls then. This has changed a little bit. Some of the assets have changed. I don't remember all these lights being these various colors. I sure as hell don't remember that little floor thing back there. Maybe this game is. Maybe this game is just messing with me. Alright, well. There's a big red button. I know that's good. No, it's not a button at all. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. You kinda wanna press on, don't you? Can we save? Can we quick save? No? No, it doesn't let you do that. Well, I guess you're just gonna have to find out if what happens when you press on. Because we're pressing on. Blackness, and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. It's pretty messed up, isn't it? Real quick. Look up here. That's not where we were before. That's not where we were before. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy.
as many times as you want to doing the various things that you wish to do. Um, you know, when I sit here and I think about this, and you can take any interpretation that you want, especially when you play the game and try to get some more of the backstory. You start out this game where it says, hey, he likes being told what to do, and uh, then you do exactly what that guy says to do. And in this very odd thing that doesn't make sense, you're given the idea of freedom. And I think that as you play this game and you play each ending, you find that Stanley, each ending has a different version of this idea of freedom. And uh, so this is a game that we've completed and, you know, I wasn't keeping a timer. It's probably 15, 20 minutes. And you can run through all the playthroughs. That there's uh, one playthrough that is it's it's pretty humorous, honestly. But it t has this super dark turn. I'd say it takes a half hour, maybe 40 minutes to play through, and it's probably the one outlier where you have an ending where Stanley doesn't have some sort of choice involved in what's happening to him. So if you haven't had a chance to pick up this game uh, and you have like a couple hours you just want to throw down, you should do that and uh, support the you know, little indie developers. And you know, what I, I you know, it's not it's not a to my knowledge it is not uh, in the Half Life universe, but there's a lot of there's a lot of assets that kind of make me believe it is even if it's not Valve that made the game, because those those little panels, the cameras and things like that, they totally look like those are from Portal. And this seems like the kind of facility that you would find, even if it wasn't Aperture Science. This, you know, this could have been a competitor easily. You know, so, you know, there's a lot of deep things happening here. And I've been thinking that I really wanted a chance to jump back in and do a playthrough and kind of have this memento and this quick labor of love. Because, you know, I, I remember the uh, first time I played this, it was, uh, it was a Christmas sale. And my daughter was just a newborn, so she was, you know, she was sleeping sporadically, very sporadically. And I was gaming at very odd times. You know, because I'm not, I don't easily go back to sleep after she goes back to sleep. And I got this game, and I was like, I'm going to play and just hopefully go to bed. And I ended up putting like two, three hours into it of just trying to get all the endings, enough time for her to wake up and want to be fed again. And I was like, oh my gosh. So, you know, well done to the people who made this or the person that made this that's possible. The achievements are hilarious in this sometimes and uh, the narrators and voice acting and the various ways they take the story within one set piece is great highly recommended thank you for joining me today if you like what we've done here please give me a like and tell me that you want more and subscribe and share with that social network keep us growing we gotta keep this pirate ship afloat and we thank you. And I will see you next time.